is architecture? That is the question we're going to try to answer today. But to start talking about architecture as a field, as an industry, let's first ask ourselves, who is an architect? I'm pretty sure everybody has some kind of a mental image when they just hear the word architect, they envision something. Well, statistically, most people envision a white male person, probably wearing thick rimmed glasses, most likely in a black turtleneck. That's the image that has been passed down from generation to generation. It has been unchanged for a very, very long time. But what if I told you that this image is actually not very realistic? Uh, currently, uh, according to NCARBS, the National Council for Architectural Boards, the number of women in the industry has actually been growing tremendously. In 2023, two out of five architects identify as women. And that's just looking at the gender. Uh, if we're looking at the minorities in the field of architecture, those numbers are still pretty low, but it have also been climbing higher and higher every year. In 2022, 7% of architects were black, 18 were Asian, and 22% identified as Hispanic or Latino. This may not sound like big numbers, but if we compare it to something that was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, all of these numbers have been growing. So if we see this trend, if we see the image of an architect changing so much, isn't it time that we also start to change what we imagine when we hear the word architect? Technology has also been developing. In the recent years, the technology rate just skyrocketed. We now have 3D printers that are eliminating the need to make physical models of buildings. We also now have huge 3D printers that are capable of printing a whole buildings by themselves. We have a company that builds 3D buildings out of concrete with just the help of a robotic arm or a 3D printer. But is that an architect? Can we call that an architect if it's something that produces buildings, that produces drawings? AI is capable of giving us design ideas, so could we call AI a designer? Well, not exactly, because it is still a tool. There are so many fears right now with technology taking over and maybe eliminating some jobs, maybe completely changing the world the way we know it. But if you think about it, technology has always been growing. It may not be as advanced as now, but 100 years ago, something that could just make the life of people easier, it was a new technology and it was improving the quality of life for people. Consider this, how many people would be living in Phoenix, Arizona right now if the air conditioner was never invented? Probably not as many as we have because of how hot it gets. It would be absolutely uninhabitable without basic technology that right now we're just taking as a given and not even considering technology anymore. So same comes for the things that are developing right now. AI is here. Yes, it's changing some things, but it's only here to improve the lives of people, to improve the quality of life. AIA is the American Institute of Architects. And it defines its goal as, uh, also, as well as the job for architects, as advancing the quality of life of our nation. They mostly care about the health, safety, and welfare of the humankind. Well, anywhere in this, in this description did you hear the word building or something that has to do with the structure? No, it's about health, it's about safety, and it's about welfare. So how do we do this? How do we accomplish this with a job of an architect? If we look at urban designers, they are mostly working with huge scale projects, but they're not literally building anything, they're collecting data. They are establishing what is the system that we need to establish at a given site, the system in place to make the users of the site happy. Uh, they are collecting data about natural resources, about flora and fauna, they're trying to look into the future and determine what will be needed in this place 20 years down in the road, maybe 50 years down the road. And after that, they can actually come up with a project that establishes that system that answers the question, what should be on this side? And how do we make it work for everybody? If you're looking at hospitals or airports, they're really also more of an urban design project than a building because they're kind of like small cities. The kitchen cooks, food 24 hours a day, people arrive 24 hours a day, seven days a week, maintenance never stops working. It's a city that is just on a smaller scale. So an architect working on a hospital or an airport is not really putting together a building. They're actually working with a system. They're working with a small city and they're mostly working with contracts. They're working, uh, collaborating with different consultants. It's not necessarily just design. 
it's a construction that never stops because hospitals never stop building, airports never stop growing because there will always be more and more people to use them. Historic preservation is another very interesting point of architecture. Historic preservation, in the mind of everybody, is about old buildings. But why do we gravitate towards the old buildings? It's really not the structure, it's the stories that we hear. But the stories don't come from buildings themselves, they come from the people who used to live there. Maybe the building got designated historic because it was so old and we get to hear about all of the epochs, all of the events that happened there. Or maybe it became historic because of one significant person who was born in that building. And then we'll hear a story of that family, but again, it's people speaking. It's not just a collection of parts and designs. It's something that connects us on a human level. Sustainability, for the longest time, was assumed to be the next big thing in architecture, is the next niche. The climate is changing, we need to help with that, so architects have this power to use sustainability in their projects, well, exactly because the climate is changing, it is no longer a niche, it's actually part of absolutely every project and every thought process. The building owner will always want to conserve water, they always want to conserve energy, but they may not want to do it because of, they believe in climate. Well, guess what? Green buildings, they actually don't cost more than regular buildings. Conserving water, conserving energy, it's not just for the good of humankind, it's also saving the building owner's money. So altogether, we're actually working on the same thing. We're making something better for everybody. Even though everybody has different goals, the result is the same. We built something better, and we made something better for everyone. There are architects who work on movie sets. They build worlds that only exist in our imagination. Yes, those are real sets, those are real physical buildings that exist, but the way they work is they don't actually host anybody. The only place where they will exist after the movie's out is our imagination. While they have physical attributes, they're not real buildings. But then why do we care about them? Because movies inspire people. Movies inspire people to do something great. Movies inspire people to be a better version of themselves, and they just make people happier. And this, isn't this the final result that we're all trying to be? We want to be healthier, happier people. AI is another step up. There are buildings in the digital world. Somebody needs to design them, somebody needs to work on them, but they have absolutely zero physical attributes. You cannot touch them. More and more people spend more time in digital worlds. More and more technology is just taking over our lives. But if you're spending so much time in the digital world, it means it also needs to be the world that is making you happier. It needs to be the world that is a better world, a step up from something else. So when you are an architect working on a digital world, you really have the same goals in mind. You're just concerning yourself with the public's health, safety, and welfare. So if you're asking yourself, what is architecture? The real answer is architecture is change. Uh, we can speak about what architecture is right now. We can think about what it is today. Today we started talking about the physical world, but then we went into a digital world, something that has no physical attributes, but it's still architecture. It just has changed over the last few years because the human lives have changed. So where is it taking us? Right now we're talking about building on Mars. Right now we're talking about starting the next city on the moon. This is great, it sounds exciting, you know, exciting opportunities, exciting projects, uh, but really what we're talking about is just creating something that is in an environment that is not very well habitable for humans, and we're not just talking about, well, just you know, put a shelter there and leave it. No, when we're talking about building on Mars, we envision cities, we envision systems that work, and we envision people being happy there. It's not just a construction, it's something to improve people's lives. And of course, there are eight billion people on the planet right now as we speak. We can't all just move to Mars tomorrow. No matter how much we want, it's just not happening. We still have this world, there will still be people living in this world. We still need to take care of this world. We need to take care of the natural resources that we have. We need to conserve them as much as we can. We need to think about the future generations that will be born in this world. Up to 34% of the carbon footprint that all of the humanity leaves today is from buildings. So if you're choosing architecture as an industry, you can contribute to eliminating up to 34% of carbon footprint. That's a huge number. 
And you can't just do it by building the same four walls and the roof over and over again. The only way to do something like this is to think, well, how can I make it better? What is next? If we're looking at cities as built environments, you're just forgetting that there's still people living there. On average, a building, when it's designed, it's assumed to be lasting for about 60 years until it gets remodeled, rebuilt, until something is added to it. Well, 60 years in human years is three to four generations. Think about it. When you're making something today, you're not really making it for you. It will be there for 60 years, so it will be there for your grandchildren. So when you're making something today, something physical, something that's going to stay on this planet, it's actually something that your grandchildren will need to still be enjoying so many years down the road. So you cannot thinking about what do I want to do today? What am I making today? You need to thinking, is it going to be still good in 60 years? How can I contribute to make something better in 60 years? So in short, architecture is nothing but change. It's nothing but trying to predict the unpredictable. It's trying to guess the future. It's trying to think about, well, what's the next big thing? And when the big thing happens, it may change. And you need to be ready for this. And you need to think, you know what? Change is good because it's an opportunity to make something better. Today, I can make something better. Maybe it's not going to be visible up until 60 years from now, but it will be better. And you're all capable of doing this. Thank you so much.